Howdy folks, uh, well this is a little bit different. This is a uh, speedrun idea the for Sultry. Um, so, Sultry I guess is the only map besides Bad Harvest. And Bad Harvest not really speedrunning, but farming. But um, I saw a speedrun video from Lorien's on Radical X's channel a long time ago. And uh, that kind of inspired me to try out some strategy here. So my idea is that I'm going to try and play this with Pure Shadow. Because there's a couple key cards in Pure Shadow that I think can be better than the typical run. Uh, first thing I do is I build an Embalmer Shrine for Ground Presence. Uh, I'm going to take the Tier 2 Monument here. Uh, I want to get the Embalmer Shrine up as early as possible. Having the Tier 2 up a little bit earlier doesn't matter. And by putting this Embalmer here, uh, specifically at this spot, it's going to block the orb from shooting a little bit later. So. That's why I put it here. If you put it, try a little bit closer, it's, it doesn't work very well. And then the archers get on the wall, you kill this as usual. Um, I want to mention that, yeah, there's a good speedrun on Radical X's channel from Lorien's, um, or it might be the Battleforge speedrun channel. Uh, both of those are good channels for, for speedrun stuff. And this is just kind of, this is not a good speedrun, right? My time is 1040-ish, which is like a minute, a minute slower than actual top speedruns. But it's also not very refined, and I think it's an interesting idea that uh, maybe can be refined to be competitive with the top strategy. Yeah, so anyway, this top strategy, usually you build a construction hut, and that allows you to build a bunch of buildings faster. Um, by going instant tier 2, I can do a couple things. For one, I get a resource booster, so I don't have to take these wells, because I'm the resource booster is going to give me the power I need. Second thing is that it lets me get a shot at Phoenix a whole lot earlier. earlier. So that I can have, uh, you know, one extra shadow phoenix doing stuff. Um, the thing you're supposed to do here is to body block with your units. What I typically do is I take one Lyra squad to walk with them to get a better body block. Um, maybe it's slightly slower. I'm sure if you were good at this, you could optimize a little bit better. And then once I get 100 power, I'm going to make a shadow phoenix. And I don't even need to activate the embalmer shrine. So that's even a possible thing that I could do to optimize this a little bit more is to not use the embalmer shrine because this phoenix is going to revive just about it. So that might let this part go a little bit faster, and I can build the Embalmer Shrine a little bit later. Um, you know, one idea, right? If I didn't build the Embalmer Shrine, then right now I'd have power to build a Furnace of Flesh. Um, the Furnace of Flesh might get attacked by the incoming wave, though, so I'm not real sure. This is like the second attempt I've ever done at this run. So I'm pretty happy that my, my second attempt was actually my personal best for this map, at least Let since the latest the patch updates, whatever. Um, come closer. So, closer. yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think this this idea has promise. No. Um, and then we're going to see a really important card, which is going to let me avoid using Stone of Torment. So usually these guys get frozen, and then you use Stone of Torment because it affects everybody at once, and you can kill this whole group pretty fast. Um, there's actually another Shadow card, which can do a similar idea, but it's a spell, which means that it becomes instantly unbound, so it feeds into my Murders of Flesh a little bit faster. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to put that spell on the thumbnail. So that spell is the Fallen's Curse, uh, which basically just infects everybody. And, um, oh, by the way, my first time I did this, I failed because I, like, killed this guy. And there was too much space between these two groups, and the Fallen's Curse didn't work. So you need to strategically kill guys so that they're still close back together. And then also it would be slightly more optimal. Um, never mind. Yeah. So I've got the power of Fallen's Curse. I run away with my guys so that the Fallen's Curse doesn't hit them. And you can see it basically instantly affects this whole army. So now, um, yeah, if I could get a little bit more corpses, like if I killed this guy a little bit more, then my power would be refunded a whole lot faster and I could get started with the Phoenixes. So that was definitely something I need to improve. This guy's infected, so I wanted to keep him there and not bring him back to my group to get so they'd get infected. Alright, I've got power for Phoenix, so I should play it now. My I misclicked there and they walked forward. Luckily they didn't get infected. The range to get infected from the Fallen Scars is actually pretty small. And actually, even now, I think having the Embalmer Shrines would not have made a difference because there's so many corpses at this moment. So if I was like better at this, I'm sure I could save a lot of time. Um, also, I built another Embalmer Shrine over here. Just, um, just FYI. Yeah. Now I've got uh, three phoenixes, and once this one revives, I'll have power to make a fourth phoenix. And four phoenixes is all you need to clear the rest of this map. Um, having more will probably make things faster, but yeah. 
there we go this squad of archers is still alive which is kind of unfortunate i think i'm probably gonna make a forsaken to deal with them um yeah not ideal but uh i mean i guess i don't know if i could just leave them there and let the orb kill them except that i've positioned this here so the orb won't kill them so anyway uh, we got the phoenixes um they now i'm gonna try and come to here and kill them and the from here the yeah so here i would like to be faster by about 30 seconds and i feel like what there was planning? 30 seconds to improve here um but yeah compared to the um lorian speed run i think getting this guy is about 30 seconds slower and then from here it's kind of about my going to phoenix and i'm obviously not that great at that <laughs> killed those were sitting back there by the way uh, i've got my troops coming here i'm also gonna make a snap draw because snap draw will make the bad guys take more damage so it'll let me kill this guy with 50 percent fewer phoenixes so um Another thing that I should do is I should build a Furnace of Flesh to help me get my Void Power back faster. And I... Um, yeah, you're going to see I'm actually going to be uh, probably 10 seconds slower than I should be because I didn't build this Furnace of Flesh. There we go, going for the boss. And um, there we go. Surviving the snapdraws actually didn't hit the boss, so I think if they had hit him, he would have died. And this is obviously uh, not very pretty, but it works, right? I the is near. with better micro, I could do this. I've got three phoenixes alive, um, one of them died, I guess. So, yeah, lots of micro mistakes here. So, anyway, I got the snapdraws. I'm gonna use this for ground presence to build the orb here. And the way you finish this map is just by building five orbs, so um. Share our fury. Yeah, with what five orbs, doing? then... She is binding herself by the way, yeah. Soldier. If I'd put, like, a we Furnace of Flesh somewhere around here, Viridia's gonna kill all these guys and I'd get a lot of power back. Now this will be something to tell the grandkids about. Um, or I could just build a Furnace of Flesh here and kill my Phoenixes to get power back. So, yeah. Um, anyway, building this monument, I'm just moving my guys to get them out of the way. Snap draw, I'm just picking up the chest because it doesn't matter. Such endless hate. And, uh, yeah, so you can see, actually, one major difference between this and the regular way you run this map is that I didn't take these two elves, which means I've got a lot less power at this point in the game, which is going to hurt me. Um, if I could recycle this power, you know, I've got uh, another 130 power in the void. Um, if I could get that power back using a Furnace of Flesh or something, that would speed this up. Um, or I could have possibly played a resource booster here, um, or possibly taken another well. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so this run was definitely limited by micro and power. Um, and just because I felt like it, I'm just building all Shadow Orbs, and I'm just going to use these Phoenixes to absorb the damage. Because uh, why not? You know, that way I, I don't have to spawn a Silver Wind Lancer, and plus I can you know, beat this with five Shadow Orbs. Which is pretty cool. There's the AMI monument to get the fifth orb. And yeah, so I'm just using this to get my guys up. Um, building this guy. And again, there's 200 power back in my void pool, right? So if I had a Furnace of Flesh, I could instantly get that power back, and I could be having my tier 3 going up in a couple more seconds. Um, yeah, so right about now, I could have built this tier 3 if I had a Furnace of Flesh. Maybe not exactly now, but somewhere close to that. Um, yeah. I can build this. I could kill my Embalmer Shrines also to get a little more Void Power. So yeah, definitely... Um, my time is slower, probably by about 10 seconds, just because I thought I would have power, and I didn't. Now we're just waiting for Moon to arrive. I mean, well, actually, I'm waiting for my orb to build, for me to get power to build my orb, but I should be, um, should have that orb built and just be waiting for Moon to arrive at this point in the game. There's moon arriving. So this would be like the actual end. Except that my, again, my orb is not built yet. 
because I didn't fully optimize this. So, um, yeah, I think this could quite easily be a sub 10 minute run with better optimization, um, but keeping the same general strategy and like literally just better micro. Um, I'm not sure if it would be like a nine and a half minute run, which would be competitive for the actual speed run. I think the current speed run is 922. Um, yeah, but I, I think it's a fun strategy and you know, how often do you see a speed run, which is like competitively viable, possibly competitively viable with just pure, pure, a pure color. So anyway, thought this was a fun strategy to share. And um, if anybody else manages to optimize this strategy, uh, please let me know, send me a replay, and uh, I can host this one again. Uh, and again, I didn't explain all of the uh, typical speedrun strategies for this map. Um, that's an excellent video, which I'm probably going to link in the description. So, thank you guys for watching. This is something new. Let me know if you want more PvE games like this. Thanks for watching.